I just want to spend a few minutes talking about galactorrhea. There was a little bit of confusion about this in class. So galactorrhea is milk secretion. Uh, galacto is the it's supposed to be like galactose, the, the sugar that's in milk. And then rhea is runny, so runny milk secretion, usually abnormal milk secretion. And this idea that you get galactorrhea with uh, dopamine antagonists um, and why you don't get that with Parkinson's disease. Okay, so first let's talk about why you get it with uh, dopamine antagonists. So uh, actually first let's talk about the, the normal physiology. So the normal physiology, you have the hypothalamus, you have the pituitary, these are not anatomically correct drawings particularly, but uh, you have the hypothalamus. And normally the hypothalamus uh, makes two things that regulate prolactin production. So there's prolactin, right? Prolactin binds what kind of receptors? Prolactin receptors, right? Prolactin receptors. Prolactin binds prolactin receptors on breast tissue, which then causes a little yay, which then leads to milk secretion. This is again the normal situation. Okay, the hypothalamus secretes two things. It secretes something called prolactin releasing factor. Hopefully this is all review from physiology. And another thing called prolactin inhibitory factor. Now in my day, when we had to walk 17 miles in the snow to get to school barefoot. Uh, we didn't have this fancy schmancy pro prolactin inhibitory factor. We just called it dopamine because prolactin inhibitory factor is just dopamine. It's just the molecule dopamine. What kind of receptor does prolactin inhibitory factor bind? That's right, it binds dopamine receptors. I think, I think dopamine too, I can't remember exactly, okay? so. Dopa prolactin inhibitory factor binds dopamine receptors because it's that's the same thing and that inhibits right inhibits that's supposed to be a little minus sign uh, production of prolactin uh, prolactin releasing factor binds very tall receptors because of the way I drew this <laughs> sorry it binds prolactin releasing factor receptors by the end of this class, you should be able to figure out what receptors things bind, because it's always the thing that binds that molecule. <laughs> All right, so prolactin releasing uh, factor receptors cause stimulation of prolactin. All right, so that's the normal situation. So what happens when we have a anti-dopamine drug? So let's say a dopamine antagonist. All right, first of all, what kind of receptor does it bind and block? I'm giving you time to think. Dopamine receptors, that's correct, right? So it binds and blocks dopamine receptors in areas of the brain that help reduce vomiting. It, it binds and blocks dopamine receptors in areas of the brain that helps reduce uh, psychosis. And in the anterior pituitary, dopamine antagonists like haldol, hal haloperidol, let's, let's use that for an example, haloperidol. So haloperidol blocks the dopamine receptors in the anterior pituitary, right? And therefore, the hypothalamus can no longer inhibit the anterior pituitary, okay? So again, <clears throat> the hypothalamus normally releases dopamine, which inhibits the anterior pituitary from releasing prolactin, which causes milk secretion. Now you can assume that in men, generally, you always have inhibition because they're not making milk most of the time. Additionally, for most women, during the majority of their life, they're not producing milk, right? So um, it seems a little inefficient, but that's the way it works. Um, normally, you have uh, more inhibi inhibitory action on the pituitary than excitatory action on the pituitary. And so normally, dopamine's inhibiting release of prolactin. So if you give somebody a drug, now that drug goes throughout the entire bloodstream, crosses the blood-brain barrier, and binds every dopamine receptor it can find, 
it binds the ones that cause vomiting, it binds the ones that cause psychosis, and it also binds these dopamine receptors in the anterior pituitary. Well, when that happens, it inhibits the inhibitor, it inhibits the prolactin inhibitory factor dopamine, it inhibits the inhibitor, and so what you get is excitation, right? So if you inhibit an inhibitor, you get more prolactin, which sounds crazy, but inhibit an inhibitor, you get more prolactin. So if you have more prolactin, you have more binding of prolactin to the prolactin receptor, which means you have more yay, right? Which means you have more milk secretion. All right, so this is true for any dopamine antagonist. Now, not all patients are going to get galactorrhea with dopamine antagonists, uh, but it is a possibility, and there's a wide variety of drugs that can cause galactorrhea. Um, some drugs are actually used because they cause galactorrhea. For instance, Reglan or metoclopramide is a drug that's often used in OBGYN. Um, it helps reduce nausea, but it also helps cause milk secretion. Uh, but it is an antidopamine drug, and so in rare cases it can cause EPS, which uh, is unfortunate side effect for patients. Now, the question I had was, is there galactorrhea in Parkinson's disease? Because we talk about it in class that if you have too much dopamine activity, I think it's important to say activity, not so much dopamine levels, you get nauseous and psychotic, okay? And again, this is a gross simplification, but when you're starting to learn, it makes it easier. Um, if you have too little dopamine activity, and of course dopamine activity is mediated by not only the levels of dopamine, but the amount of receptor stimulation, uh, and then you get EPS. All right, so now let's talk about Parkinson's disease. My question was, do Parkinson's patients have galactorrhea when they first present with the disease? And the answer is no, and the question then becomes why? All right, well with Parkinson's disease, the problem is, and this isn't a patient who has no drugs on board. This is a patient who's newly diagnosed with Parkinson's. So the problem with Parkinson's is they have that involution of the volume or the density of tissue in the substantia nigra, right? So that's an anatomical portion uh, in the central nervous system. And that portion of the central nervous system is responsible for normally producing dopamine. Okay, so that portion of the brain normally makes dopamine, which then inhibits the basal ganglia. And we went over that in the handout and in class ganglia, all right? Okay. The reason that they, these patients do not have galactorrhea is that the only problem in Parkinson's, before they've had any drugs on board or anything like that, is the substantia nigra. In a Parkinson's patient, the hypothalamus is fine. The anterior pituitary is fine. The, the uh, breast tissue is fine. It's not, it's not affected. And this is a really important uh, idea to get uh, into your head, which is that the natural situation in the brain, you have, you know, one synapse, or you have several synapses, right? Uh, impinging on some target synapse. And you have this idea that each synapse interacts in some way with the target synapse, and when the membrane voltage gets high enough, you get triggering of an action potential, and then that signal goes somewhere else, right? So in the brain, you have, you know, with between each dendrite, <laughs> this is not a nice thing, but ax, you know, between each of the two nerves, you have this tiny little space between the two uh, neurons in which you have a little bit of uh, neurotransmitter going a tiny distance and then binding a tiny receptor and then going. So in 
your body, the neurotransmitters don't act like hormones. They aren't going in the bloodstream. They're just going in this little tiny space between the nerves in that little synaptic cleft that doesn't, that doesn't, uh, oh, the Death Star is shooting off. Um, in that little synaptic cleft that communicates knowledge or information from one nerve to the next. But when you give a drug, you are blasting the entire body with a drug. So if we give, say, a dopamine antagonist because we want to treat psychosis, and again, oversimplification, but let's just go with that. Dopamine antagonist to treat psychosis. Well, we're not really trying to treat the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary, but at some point somebody noticed that if you use a drug like Haldol or uh, Thorazine, um, if you use one of those drugs uh, on patients that are psychotic, they seem to be less psychotic afterwards. Um, so, you know, when those uh, drugs were started to be used, nobody knew the mechanism of action of those drugs. They just noticed that if they threw those drugs at patients, their psychosis seemed a little better. So um, it's, you know, the side effect is that this is a, it's a systemic drug you're giving. You're getting side effects throughout the entire body and throughout the entire brain. So when you give a drug, you're going to get effects all over the entire body that are, are not intended. Whereas in the natural system, only the areas that are affected, generally speaking, are going to be affected. <laughs> okay, the, only the, the areas that are uh, diseased are going to have an effect. So that's, keep that in mind. Okay, uh, so hopefully that helps explain uh, about the mechanism of galactorrhea and why we see that with dopamine antagonist drugs, but not in patients with Parkinson's. Mm -hmm.